This man would run past a group of capybaras every day. But he wouldn't interact with them. Capybaras are too skittish anyways. He would simply watch them from afar. Then, one day, one of them took shelter from the rain under his umbrella. And he thought that maybe that moment with her would be the one and only. After all, she is a wild animal. But the next day, when he reached the park, she walked up to him, no fear. Like she wanted to say hello. And ever since then, they would hang out every day. Luciano would stop on his runs to give Cuppy scratches. Cuppy would eagerly await Luciano's visits. Because it means endless love and cuddles from her new bestie. But Luciano could have never anticipated what would come next. He was walking through the park just as usual and spotted two new members of the group. Tiny, adorable baby capybaras. And it hit him. They weren't just any babies. They were Cuppy's pups. Mum kept an eye on them. But she let Luciano come close, even at their most vulnerable, like when she was feeding the babies. And Luciano now had two more unexpected friends to hang out with on his run, like he did with Cuppy. He would watch them grazing, and the Cuppy bars didn't mind. Cuppy bars are the biggest and sweetest rodents on the planet. I couldn't imagine such wonderful creatures existed before I met them. We all would love a cuppy bar pal like Cuppy. But it is up to them if they want your affection. Maybe one rainy day, you too will be joined by a floofy friend. I have never seen a human so obsessed with anything as my mom is with Einstein. In the Christmas holidays, we were over for dinner and she was like, Frida, you have to move over so Einstein can sit in the comfortable chair. Because if he's on the plastic chair, he will probably slide. If he walks around with her all the time, he is the grandchild, and I'm convinced she loves him more than she loves me. <laughs> when we were gonna get a dog, we did not want a white staffy. Because I thought they're not cute. <laughs> but then we got there, and we came in, and I just looked at the dog, and that's when we fell in love. The day we took him home, he slept in the crate. He did not cry for a second. He just laid in the crate and totally relaxed. The longer we had him, the more I got to know his personality. He will crave our attention at all times. He will sit on our lap and he will be so mad if we sit at the dinner table and he's not invited. Even when it's his favorite things, he will leave it. <laughs> he doesn't want to eat it without us. Today is Einstein's first day of home alone training again after the holidays. When we started training him to be alone, we took up the camera so we could see if he started biting our shoes or acting out. 
But then somehow he knew we were filming. He just sat looking into the camera, making himself look as sorry as possible. He's a big powder, but he gets very, very happy when we get home. Oh, you got it. Oh, you need some belly rubs. Oh. He's a drama queen and he's very extra. If we ignore him, he will just jump our faces and be like, Hello, look at me! He will jump up in the middle of us and start kissing us. People think they're dangerous dogs, but they are so loving. He brings us so much unconditional love. My entire life revolves around him, <laughs> and he knows it. He <laughs> was born in 1940. I know. They told us he's very, very old. We can see it in his bones, his muscles, and everything, his sight, his hearing. Coco was from friends of us, and at that time he was around 55 years old. And they got it from a kind of animal sanctuary where he was brought by some animal police. The previous owner was hitting him with a pen. So they asked me if I know a place or I could help him. And then Linda told me, well, let's give him the best year of his life. Because he was already old. His sight was very bad. Uh, he really couldn't see a thing. So we decided to go to the vet for it. And the vet told us, well, there are a lot of infections and uh, he must be have a lot of headache. So it's better to remove his eye. But that was dangerous because of his age. We were very scared that he wouldn't survive the anesthesia. But we didn't want him to get any longer. He had so much pain. So we couldn't postpone the decision to get him there for a surgery. We can't change anything in his case because there's only one eye left. So we're trying to keep everything as steady as possible. But within a few days, we really noticed a different bird. Now he's very busy. He's playing a lot. And sometimes he's playing for hours. The biggest difference was when his other Amazon parrot, Chico, they became friends from the beginning. They're very busy, cuddling the whole day and sitting next to each other. I think we spoil him a little bit more than the rest of our birds. <laughs> so uh, he gets all his vegetables and fruit, but uh, he always gets a little bit extra. <laughs> the only bird who's allowed to sit on our sofa because he wouldn't destroy it. And he has now the freedom to walk the whole day in the garden. And now we have him for, I think, six years, maybe longer. We can't imagine what the things he's seen in all these uh, 83 years. <laughs> but he seems to be younger every day. <laughs> Are you chewing on my rug? Hey! <gasps> He's a firecracker and I love it about him. Whether it be doing his zoomies around the backyard or flying down the hallway, <laughs> everything he does is funny. Bane actually sits on his bum like a human and puts his paws on the table. He loves the trampoline. We put him up there and he started running around. He's a class clown. His personality has shone through from the moment we got him. He chewed everything. Good boy. We're gonna have a look. We can't chew it. I'll talk to him. It's going in one ear and out the other. 
He has made us pull our hair out. Like, all he wants is to be near people. He is a massive cuddler. Loves to snuggle up. And he loves children. My daughter spends the most time with him. She gets anxiety. And when things get a bit overwhelming for her, she'll go outside and they'll lie in the sun together. And the dog will actually put his body weight on top of her because he knows that that's what she needs to be able to calm down. He hasn't had proper training as a therapy dog. He has just picked up on what she needs. So she's got a friend that she can rely on. He's such a smart boy. Bull Terriers are a very misunderstood breed. I've had people started screaming at me, saying, get your aggressive dog away. And Bane looks at me as though, hang on, what did I do? He hasn't got an aggressive bone in his body. He has made us laugh, he has made us cry. But most of all, he's made us happy. Ellie May had never been sheared in five years, never had received care. I have never in my life seen a sheep so wide, and she hasn't been able to see for years. So today, we are going to trim around her face so she can see. And because that fleece had been hanging around her legs, um, she was walking on it and pulling and ripping at her skin. So she adapted by kicking out her legs to be able to walk, and that's the state in which she arrived here. So we need to be really careful because it's, it is very heavy. It's pulling at her skin. So the very first thing I did was cut away the fleece around her eyes. And so that made a huge difference. It was like all of a sudden she realized that she could see where she was. But a few days later, we did shear her with the tool, in which took us a couple of hours, and we got off almost 40 pounds of fleece off of her body. Well, we are gonna finish cleaning up her underside today. And because of five years of buildup of lanolin in her wool, she was very yellow after we sheared her. But underneath it, she was absolutely beautiful. She's still a little tentative about where she's at. However, we have to be really careful because she now has a permanent walking impairment. But just getting that weight off of her um, was an immense um, improvement in her health and her personality. She just runs around hopping and happy and she can move. Good morning, Ellie Mae. Everybody spent the night together in here. Because she has not seen any other animals for probably four years. She definitely was very timid at first. We had difficulty getting her to come to a food bowl to eat grain. <laughs> so we put her in with our sheep, Yammy. And after everybody took an hour or two to get used to each other, they were absolutely fine. Hi there. Yummy. It did, didn't take long for her to realize that they were friendly. Right now, she's just one of the gang. She spends her days with all of the other sheep. It's all went beyond amazing, and she's blossoming being with other animals. She has found her family. Every day, this prairie dog jumps into his owner's car to meet up with his buddies. Rocket with the squirrels. Hit it with the dogs. And go to town with the cats. 
Chuck has the most unique friend group of all time. People are surprised to see such a brave prairie dog. But Chuck was never afraid of anyone he encounters. Even on day one. His owner got Chuck from a rescue many years ago. Oh my god, the cutest video I've ever seen in my whole life. His past is unclear, but by the time the baby was nursed into health, he got too dependent on humans to be released. So he became a regular family member. Chuck is happy. His owners made sure he had the best life possible. So Chuck had the best snacks, many cozy nooks, and tons of love. Chuck bonded with the owners so much, he refused to leave their side. But prairie dogs are social animals. Even though Chuck had everything, he still needed a friend. So Dad decided to take him outside. Chuck hopped into the car with no problem and went off exploring the wild. There, Chuck met many animals. But unlike most prairie dogs, he wasn't afraid one bit. He would run up to them as if saying, hi. It was amazing. Every time Chuck would meet someone new, it was an adventure. Then one day, his family got another rescue. It was a prairie dog named Luna. He started snuggling her right away. And she didn't mind. <laughs> now, be it big or small, there's always a friend beside Chuck has no idea that he's a gigantic dog. This is where Midas chills. He tries to squeeze into small spaces or in between two people. Midas! He'll jump in the car and you can't stop him. What are you doing? He gets stuck and he knows it, but he still keeps doing it. Come on, <laughs> Right on my lap. People always say St. Bernard's, they're big teddy bears and they sleep all the time. Not really true. I always said someday I'm gonna get a puppy St. Bernard. And when I saw Midas for the first time, it just felt like it was meant to be. He was right there and he was perfect. The night I brought him home, everyone was there and ever since then, he is definitely the center of our family. <laughs> He'll just jump up on him. Everyone, I sit and lay with him and watch TV, and I'll bring him all around with me. He's a huge mama's boy. <laughs> but when he went through adolescent years, might have changed. Good morning. He was a lot bigger than me and a lot stronger than me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, sometimes he looks like a lion walking through my house. He's been stubborn. When I'd say it's walk, he would just lay there and look at me. He will have no idea how muddy he is. And he'll just jump up on my white sheets. He um, definitely has his Beethoven moment. And just kept growing. <laughs> Hi. But you keep on top of it before it takes over. So he's done lots of work because my strength is not there in comparison to him. I do have control over him with my voice and with my actions. I say stop, and he listens. If he wants something, he rests his head on things throughout the house. He's really a really good dog now. But he still definitely doesn't know his size. 
and I'll bring him to my grandma's and he takes up half her floor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but you're just like, Midas. And so he just brings smiles everywhere. I just want people to be aware that it is a lot of work and it's not just for the average person who doesn't want to train a dog. But he's kind of the biggest blessing for me. He has the cutest puppy dog eyes. He just looks at me and I almost can know what he's thinking. I love Midas. Hi, buddy! <laughs> Doesn't she look like Toothless the Dragon? What are you doing, little baby? Where are you going? In her ears, she folds them back. Her eyes look a little angry. What are you doing? Be silly? Yeah. She's very fast. <laughs> you wouldn't think so, because she's so tiny. <gasps> when she runs full blasts, all four legs are off the ground at one time. Toothless only chooses to listen when she wants to. Baby, want some tuna? Don't you do it, don't you, oh. She makes a little splat noise when she jumps down from something high. We could tell immediately that she was different. She's not a munchkin. I'm gonna get you. Toothless has a naturally occurring dwarfism. So she's just small all over. Her bottom jaw is smaller. Her legs are very short. We found her in the middle of the back parking lot. Toothless got her head stuck in a drainage grate. She probably wouldn't have survived the winter if we hadn't caught her. But she is pretty tough. <laughs> she's real healthy. She's very stubborn. Very round. She's not real cuddly, but she's always around us. It's 5.30 in the morning. She'll uh, get up. Oh, you got it. She'll walk across the living room and we will literally stop what we're doing and watch her walking. Just because she's so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> we have tiny little stairs all over the house so she doesn't have to jump up as much. Her cats are much bigger than her, and she'll stand up to them if they bother her. She does whatever she wants. So she wouldn't come if I called her name. What are you doing at the box? Huh? Toothless and her stubbornness basically refuses to sleep in our room. The only time she comes in is when she wants our attention. She will come up on the bed and start pawing at the blankets and will not leave me alone until I get up so she and I can play together. But she gets very feisty at night. And those are Toothless and my special nights. And uh, so she and I play together a lot. What you doing still? What you doing? When she was in my house growing up, I would have my screen open. And if she ever wanted to leave, she could have left. She did. Yeah. Yeah. But she never did it. I could put her on to a tree. Oh, what you got there? And I'll just knock on the tree or call her name. She comes down and jumps back on me. She was more afraid of the outside than anything. With best friends, because I saved the baby. I was driving my daughter to her weekend school, and then all of a sudden I see a baby squirrel on the canopy. It was getting attacked by birds. And all of a sudden this bird comes and knocks the squirrel off the canopy onto the street. So I figured I'll get, put the squirrel back up there and maybe the mother will come and save it. But nine hours later, I go back and I see the baby squirrel on the floor again. I was worried it could actually die at this moment. So I took her home. Hello. My name is Della. 
the first day that we had her, she was on the attack and she was definitely frightened. And it wasn't that she was afraid of us, something was wrong. And I realized that this squirrel has fleas all over it. So I took one of the flea combs and I got all the fleas off. And then she was the nicest thing in the world. Instant connection. Me and Stella are hanging outside. She's got a little vegetable stick. It was like me and her were meant to be together. She looked at me like, you saved my life. You're my hero and I'm going to be with you. Where are you going? Somebody thinks they're hiding. She still has a little wild in her. Don't break it. Don't break it. Hey. She loves to travel around and climb. What's the matter? It's too cold for you? Playing in your little winter wonderland? She loves to run out there and just dig, dig, dig. Stella's superpower is ability to make you fall in love with her. She has a really special quality of charm. She'll just look at you and you want to give her something. You look like a big burrito. Are you a burrito? She's totally amazing and she really brings a lot of joy and, and fun. What does he have, Fred? What do you have? What do you... What is that? If he sees a new boat that just arrived, he just needs to get on that boat. Fred! That's not your boat! So he's well known at the harbor. He even has a little security shirt. Fred is kind of crazy and rough around the edges. He was actually walking more normal on the boat than he was off the boat, which was kind of funny. Here he comes down. Come on, Fergie. Because at first he wasn't very healthy. My husband and I were hanging out on the boat and we suddenly hear this really loud meowing. And we saw this little tiny orange kitten outside. He was covered in fleas and just looked kind of sick. And suddenly my husband was like, oh, well, we should get him a bed and we should get him a collar, food and some toys and a litter box. I just knew at that point that we were going to end up keeping Fred. He adjusted as if he was always there. Living on a boat definitely brought out his personality to its fullest. Fred! Fred likes everything on the boat. If the engine is running, he's there. He's a harbor master in his own right. And I think the only living thing that Fred respects is Fajoli. Fajoli is definitely different than Fred. He was also a stray kitten. He's very shy, very well behaved, very big, but gentle. They are opposites. Fred can get rough and a little bit too rambunctious and Fajoli will just show his size and Fred listens. Fred is always there no matter what we're doing. 